Welcome back to Brick Model Railroader on YouTube. I'm Glenn. I'm Kale. And we have the Reading CVL Combine and PBN Coach. Yes. These are models that Kale designed, uh, inspired by Penlug member Josh Sanders' cars. Um, these are made to go with our Reading They are based one. on a real prototype. They <laughs> real well, prototypes. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, CVL and PBN were the <laughs> original classifications. Yes. They're made to go with our Reading T1. Uh, as, as you see here, we've modeled the Reading Ramble scheme, but we'll cover that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So, um, originally these were used as commuter cars, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they started building these in, I believe, the 1920s. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were up, updated and modified. In yeah, they, were, they, they, built, they built several of them up through, I believe, the 30s and up, continued updating them through the 40s and into the 50s. And they even. lasted for a long time. Yes. Like, well through the 60s, mm -hmm. and at least. So, yes. Yeah, so um, we have the, the combine here, which is uh, part baggage compartment and part uh, coach. And then the regular coach, which is just all, all chairs. Um, that's pretty much the only differences between them. They were, Reading actually had a pretty yeah, standard. They're, they're, they're both based on a, a common design. Right. And so it's just, you know, yeah, basically so. modular. <laughs> you know, put a baggage section here and yeah. there's the rest, you know. The car lengths are the same, you know, the right. basic construction is the same. You just, you know, have right. different compartments. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, a lot similar between them. Um, which, which helps and uh, gives it a nice consistent look and uh, mm -hmm. definitely something that Redding, you know, it's definitely a characteristic of Redding. So they look, uh, I think they turned out pretty well. You did a good job on them. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so they were also used um, on the Redding Rambles, which was the passenger trains that the Redding ran in from 1959 to 1964, uh, pulled by the T1 locomotives, uh, basically just as rail fan excursions. Mm -hmm. um, they were painted, as you see here, with the two-tone green, the uh, the darker green, and then the lighter green window band, as shown. Um, but we will include instructions also to model them in uh, all dark green, which would have been the commuter version. Yes. So like the non-ramble scheme. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to go over some of the features and differences between... Um, well, so we should say we're including instructions for more than just these two cars. Yes. There are, so there are several differences, as we mentioned. These cars mm -hmm. were based on one standard design and upgraded and modified into different subclasses. We'll also be including instructions to model a CVK combine, which was the air-conditioned version. Yes. And then a PBM coach. Which, yes, which they modified to include a second bathroom at the other end. Um, there's a couple minor interior differences, mm -hmm. and then uh, underside equipment as well. Yeah, with the air conditioning, of course. Yeah, the air can. Yeah, the uh, the underside details between the two coaches is identical, except for when you add the air conditioning and you add a couple more components. We'll have instructions for all of those, mm -hmm. all of those. And features. also the roof vents. Well, um, we'll have instructions for the as-built roof vents, which included more vents. And this and then, is the modified version. Yes, this is the later version. As time went on, they they reduced the number of vents in the cars. So, okay, so we'll include instructions for all of those details. Um, so yeah, you can go over the features now. So these cars turned out really well. They're basically our standard, base uh, pretty much a standard yeah. eight stud wide mm -hmm. uh, commuter passenger car and uh, and combine. Um, yeah. Built built in the same scale, of course, and mm -hmm. um, removable roofs. Roofs are removable, so you yeah. can access the interior. Full, um, fully detailed and accurate interior. Mm -hmm. um, um, even chairs. includes bathroom with toilet and sink. And sink uh, is um, also the plumbing is not hooked up, however, so <laughs> so there is no running water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of chairs to pose passengers and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the combine includes the baggage compartment and the com um, with the, the baggage clerk desk. As such, and. You can also, if you decide to put several of these behind a T1 or put the combine and several coaches behind the T1, the doors are actually very easy to remove mm -hmm. and you can have them open because they did on several yes. occasions run trips where the baggage doors were open and then you'd have several rail fans hanging out the window with their cameras. Photographing well, the train. Hanging, hanging out the windows with <laughs> their cameras. Photographing a locomotive around a curve. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, some very nice film footage of that um, been posted around. Yes. Yeah, it's. There's plenty of details uh, in there, and you got the you know the partitions between the baggage and passenger sections, and then between the um, the lavatory and the equipment closet, and mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of them. And then you've the got the vestibules. I'm. This is 
I, re I really love the vestibules yeah. on, on the, these uh, cars. It, I'm very proud of the fact that I have the actual uh, gray, uh, the gate. The gate. Yeah, that turned out really well. The it's collapsing the, uh, gate that goes across the end of the vestibule. And if you want to collapse the gate, you just remove the pieces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll want to substitute a couple of uh, a couple of tiles in there. Yeah, uh, but, one by um, four tiles. But. Yeah, but we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll specify that if you want. That would make a nice detail too. So yeah, this is basically this is the combine and the coach is basically the same. It's just 100% chairs in 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 the, mm -hmm. in the middle here and. You know, it, actually, it, it's a kind of interesting. Um, instead of having the equipment closet, they laid, uh, they put uh, inwards-facing chairs in that section, and they put a couple of inward-facing chairs on the other end of the car too. It was a nice little, you know, difference between the yeah, a little not <laughs> just a standard coach car with just chairs down each side of the each side of the car. Adds yeah. a little bit of uh, a little bit of flavor. Redding was known for having some quirks, and that was probably one of them. Yeah, these are definitely very. These are unique Redding design cars. Of course, they're, uh, they're their own in-house design, um, and they had a lot of them. And they use a lot of them. So then, of course, the underside <laughs> details as well. It's all there, pretty much the same between both you of them. You your, got you got your brake rigging, your uh, air tanks, air tank, and your equipment uh, boxes, electrical cabinet, mm -hmm. um, you know, various passenger accoutrements, different parts of the frame, and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turned out really well, and of course the yeah. truck. The trucks are identical, and you've got the um, got the steps on the side which are connected to the trucks. And, and we've modeled both the air brake line and steam heat line. Mm -hmm. That was important because actually ten of the T ones were built with those. So the ten, ten yes. of the T ones were built uh, to be used in dual service between passenger and freight. And they had so they steam had heat steam lines, heat, steam heat lines, and train yeah. signal lines as well. Yes. So that that would go really well with these cars. Um, well. You can, it'll make sense. <laughs> um, yeah, the trucks are the same between the two models, and uh, we actually have a nice watch your step decal placed on each. The, yes. top, the top step of each of the four corners of the car, and that turned out really well. You can, it's very easily legible. <laughs> very small decal, but it turned out very well, and yeah. I just broke a detail. It's not too that, difficult sorry. to put on, though. No, it's not. We have, um, there's some tricks that you pick up on placing decals, and it's really not that bad at all. So, yeah, it's pretty much... And I should mention that 408 here was the actual combine used on the Rambles. Yes, and that survives too. That survives. And um, you can actually ride in that combine today if you, you can, want. You can, actually. <laughs> um, the one detail that we will also change on or call out on the combine car is the window placement in the door. The 408 currently survives with one single window placed in the center of the baggage door. Mm -hmm. We have the three windows model. They changed them over the years as the yes. Redding used them, but we'll include both of those differences yes. as well. Yeah. Um, what decals are we having? So these are these are the Redding decals, and these, these are, are the Redding decals. These are good for the Rambles versions and, and the, the non-Rambles and yeah, the regular commuter service version. And and that's also good for one of the tourist railroads that we're offering, right? Yes. The tour the railroad that owns um, the 408. Yes. It, to have it painted pretty much exactly like this. Yeah, that car looks exactly like that today. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll so have the, decals for that. Yeah, the de and the decal sets for the Redding cars will do actually do two cars. Two so coaches you, and two combines. Or a coach and a combine, whichever, one, you should, uh, whichever you should choose. And that's one sheet. You'll be able yeah. to do two cars. Yeah, you'll be able to do sheet. two different cars, any combination from one sheet. Right. Um, we'll also have uh, Boston, Maine. They got... They got some of each kind of cars. Yeah, right? Boston and Maine uh, bought some cars used from the Reading. They got uh, a few coaches and a few combines. Um, we'll have Maine Central decals. Uh, Maine Central bought a few coaches used. They never got any of the combines. They just got coaches. Um, we'll also have uh, Central New Jersey Railroad decals. They had. They had copies of both. They didn't have the original yeah, cars. Yeah, Central New Jersey built copies of both the uh, the coaches and the combines uh, for their own use on commuter trains. And then we're contemplating a few tourist railroads that have used them over the years. This is kind of like <laughs> on the eastern side of the United States. This is like the Southern Pacific's <laughs> version of the of the commuter car because like a lot of them survived and a lot of them are still mm -hmm. used. So. Um, yes. So yes. Yeah, they're, they ended up in a lot of tourist roads, and a lot of them mm -hmm. are still in use. So uh, we'll have a few decals to to model some of those tourist roads as well. You know, maybe you're a local history nerd and like us, um, <laughs> and uh, want to model something closer to home, and that would be a great opportunity. So 
Yeah, we'll have several of those available. Um, obviously, we'll post an article when we uh, put these up for pre-order. We'll have an article detailing all of the uh, all of the decals uh, in it. Um, speaking of, these are going to be available on October fourth. October fourth, which is a Friday, the first Friday of the month. Um, along at the same time with our T1 kit, mm -hmm. um, and so these will be delivered before or uh, with the T1 locomotives, likely before because yeah. they'll likely before. Yeah, they'll take they'll take a lot less time to um, produce and put together, and it's just these will just be regular premium instructions. Mm -hmm. um, so as always, they'll get the uh, any custom parts. Is a I think. Uh, there's, there's a few monopods used in yes. used on the the underside in the trucks, and then there's a, I think a U clip in there as well, mm -hmm. and then obviously we have four axles using our ball bearing wheel sets. So we'll include um, we'll include a set and a set of wheel sets in uh, in each kit. Yes. Um, and these will be available for pretty much indefinitely. Um, the T1 will be more limited release, uh, just having pre-orders open between. Uh, October 4th and uh, the first couple of weeks of December. These will be available pretty much whenever. Yeah, these these will just these are like uh, the same these as our stuff, yeah, these yeah are same just, as our standard premium instruction kits. Mm -hmm. We will we will do our best to keep them in stock on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, they go beyond just the yes. just the rambles and the T1. So you know mm -hmm. it makes sense. And maybe you don't want to build any of those versions. Maybe you just want some good passenger cars. These are great passenger cars. Yeah. I mean you're more than you're you know more you than can, welcome to do whatever you can you want. make up your own railroad and put on a put on whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, if you can letter them Gordy and defeat it if you wanted to. <laughs> I might a, know someone who would do that. That's yeah, <laughs> I, I might do that. That's the model railroad joke. If you don't, if you don't know the Gorian defeated, you should look that up. Um, <laughs> we also have a third car that we are planning to accompany both of these. Yeah, uh, in the Rambles trains, they normally had, they normally used 401, 408 uh, combine. Just the one combine. Yeah, as far as we, as far as we know, in our research, they've only used, they only used the 408 mm -hmm. combine. And they use several coaches, but they use several different coaches. Um, but so also, the Rambles trains on, were like 16 cars long. Yeah, it was big trains. Um, but also on the Rambles trains, they would occasionally use a cafe car, specially modified for the Rambles. Mm. Um, so we have. We so have, we'll be doing we'll be doing instructions for that car as well in the future. Mm -hmm. So you can build a complete Rambles train um, with T1 combine coaches and the cafe car if you want. Mm -hmm. And that'll be available. Pretty much indefinitely too. That'll be just another yes. regular premium. Yeah, instruction. that'll just be another we regular wanted, release. We wanted to focus on the combine and the coach first because they were the most often yes. used on the Rambles and the dining. The, the cafe car wasn't always added to the train. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to make that available on a later date and focus on getting these available first. But we will. We do have the plan for that, and um, that is coming down the line. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's everything. We went over the details. There's a lot of nice details in here. These are these really are just great basic passenger cars that you can use. I mean, there's a lot of good techniques in here if you uh, are interested mm -hmm. in maybe just building one one of these and then use it building your own passenger cars. I mean, yes. the vestibule is a great design. It's kind of weird, but it's a great design. <laughs> um, and then there's a lot of other there, techniques. I will warn you now, there might be an unorthodox construction technique in there. Yeah, but, there, there, but it, there is another orthodox construction But it works technique. and it's... It works very well. Technically and legal. It, yeah, it is. It is a 100% <laughs> Lego solution, but um, it is a little weird. So buyer be warned, I guess, but they are great passenger cars and you did a really good job with them. I mean, there's just, well, thank you. you're welcome. I mean, these are just, you know, if I was going to have a passenger car, a more, a more roughly modern looking passenger car behind a more modern looking engine like the T1, these would be pretty much what you'd expect. I mean, they're more of a, a, a simple design with the, the arch roof instead of the, the clear yeah. story style in the center. Yeah. Um, these are, these are commuter coaches. They were, they were meant for short haul passenger traffic. And, and, uh, between towns and cities designed to be easily built and yeah had to have built. a lot of them built as well light easily built um, Easy to maintain and fit a lot of people inside. Yes, and it's a good reason why they used them on the rambles mm -hmm. So yeah, they're it's a great starting point for passenger cars and they an absolutely fantastic addition to the T1 So I think that's everything that we have about these cars um, once again They'll be available on for pre-order on Friday October 4th um, which is a couple weeks from right now when we're filming the video. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they'll be available on that day along with our T1 and we'll be able to, we should be able to deliver them before we ship the T1 kits just because yeah. uh, there's a lot less involved than the putting the kit together for the T1. But um, anything else? Can you think of anything else? Um, I can't think of anything else. We talked about, yeah, we talked, we talked about, about everything. different variations, decals and everything. Decals. We're good. Cool. Well, we'll wrap it up there for now. We'd like to thank everybody for watching and all the support. Thank you for your continued interest in Brick Model Railroader. We love, uh, we're, we're extremely passionate about the Lego train hobby and we love, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, both the instruction making side, but primarily the article side, which is, you know, we started as a hobby website and that's the way that we're staying. Um, but the instructions are really nice because um, it allows us to do things that, you know, to learn a lot that we haven't, uh, had the chance to learn yet and um it's it's something that we enjoy it's but it's not our primary focus we're we're, we're we are focused on supporting the hobby in, in in other ways too uh one of those ways is octrainburg we're posting this in october so every octrainburg we run uh for the past three years uh in october we've run a month-long building challenge which we call the octrainburg challenge and it's different every year um the first year we did the challenge was to build pretty much the longest train you can whether it's a locomotive or a car or whatever um, the second year was a foreign challenge, which it had to be basically a foreign prototype to the builder. And then this year we have a, uh, basically a motorization technic, you know, kind of action challenge. So where you build a build Automation, a model. animation. Yeah, animation, automation. That's a good way to put it. So basically your model has to, apart from rolling along the track, have some other sort of animation feature to it. It's a really interesting challenge and I'm really excited to see what we have this year. But so that goes on from uh, basically the official start is October 1st and then uh, it technically ends on October, on the last day of October, but we have a few days and maybe about a week of uh, extra period for those people who are building building models and uh, need like the final brickling quarter or anything like that or just the extra time to apply some decals, we give a little bit of a grace period. But that's going on right now since we'll be posting this in October. So mm -hmm. make sure to head to brickmodelrealty.com to check out um, plenty of information on Octrainburg. We yeah. will have prizes, by the way. Yes, we'll we have will. some awesome prizes. <laughs> they'll, be in the, they'll either have been announced by the time we post this or they will be announced, but that's all coming up. And um, yeah, we talked about Octrainburg too. <laughs> um, again, thank you very much for watching and all your support, and we'll leave it there for now. This is Brick Model Railroader on YouTube, signing off. Bye-bye.